like the bump, but the blood got bump. Before Gucci Mane would become a New York Times best-selling author with his autobiography and prepare to release his second book, a motivational work titled The Gucci Mane Guide to Greatness, offering an unprecedented look at his secrets to success, health, wealth, and self-improvement. My, my engineer suggested it, you know, when I was away, and then it was just something like, I guess, the kill time. Mm. Just a scratch. You in prison, you don't got nothing but time, you know what I'm saying? I just reflect on my life and... Like I just started writing and next thing I know, 30, 40 pages was down and I was off and gone. Before Gucci Mane would drop over six figures in a bet with Drake over the result of the NBA Eastern Conference Finals in 2019. Yeah, I lost a bunch of money. I lost over six figures and I lost Real? and I lost my damn shirt because because we bet the jersey too, so I lost the shirt too. So I like I literally lost my shirt. Before Gucci Mane would finally start working with the Italian fashion house Gucci, announcing that he would be the face of their Gucci Cruise 2020 campaign. Pain. I never been this relaxed. I had this much fun. It's, you know, it's unreal. That's actually hilarious because back in the day, Gucci, they were doing everything they could to stop the association. They didn't want him using their name. Now, in terms of success and longevity, well, few rappers have the type of extensive resume that my man Gucci Mane is packing. Now, he's often referred to as one of the founding fathers of trap music, and he's been dropping bars since 2001 when he put out his first underground release, Straight Drop Records Presents... Gucci Mane LaFleur. Now since then, he's amassed dozens of mixtapes, singles, collaborations, and studio albums. And with Gucci recently taking to Instagram to ask if we'd like to see the old Gucci back. Well, I thought now would be a great time to take a stroll down memory lane and look back at the beginnings of one of the most successful and controversial rappers ever. And with all the arrests and crazy stunts I'm about to detail in this video, well, I think we can all agree that the new Gucci is a big improvement to the old one. If you agree with me, let me know by hitting that like button right now. What's going on guys? It's your boy Michael McCrudden back at it again with an updated look at Gucci Mane here for you on Before They Are Famous. Now we'll be doing a number of updates over the next couple of weeks to get this channel's algorithm back in tip top shape. Now we make sure to put in the work digging up new clips and facts that just weren't available the first time we made this video. Now we're always looking for requests on who to do next, so please let us know in the comments down below. Also, you can peep the merch at michaelmccrudden.com. All right, now let's get into this video. Be sure to subscribe and hit that bell. Boom! Gucci Mane was born Radrick Delantic Davis on February 12, 1980 in Bessemer, Alabama. Now a lot of you guys might be wondering, how does he go from that to Gucci Mane? Fair question? Well, it's a nickname that Radrick he inherited from his grandfather, James Dudley Sr. Now this man first earned it himself after falling in love with the Gucci brand and serving in Italy during World War II. When he returned home, well, he bequeathed the name to a nephew who passed it further down the line until we ended up with the Gucci main that we all know and love today. Crazy, who would have thunk that? What's your name, man? My name is Ralph. Ralph what? Davis. And who, and who, who whose son is, who your son, man? Richard Davis. And what's his nickname? Huh? What's your son's nickname? He stole my nickname. And what is it? Huh? Gucci. Gucci, Gucci man, your son. Yes. What year he was born? 1980. The man from that clip is Gucci's father, Ralph Everett Dudley. Now he was a power plant worker and a former U.S. serviceman. Now his mother, Vicki Jean Davis, she was a school teacher and a social worker. Now the two they met in 1978, and at the time, well, Vicky, she was already a mother, having a son, Victor Davis, from a prior relationship. Now by the time Vicky became pregnant with Gucci, well, Ralph, he was on the run from the cops. He was wanted for selling crack and heroin, so he fled Alabama for the mean streets of Detroit. After Gucci was born, well, Ralph, he would visit his son sporadically throughout his childhood. Now in most cases, getting to spend time with your father is a blessing, even in short doses, but for these two, things were a bit more complicated. That's because whenever he would visit Gucci, well, his son would pick up tricks from Ralph's con artist trade. Now, years later, those same tricks, they would start getting Gucci in a whole bunch of trouble. I think a lot of those things that I just, I caused myself, man. You know, I, I would do a crime and then they would punish me for it. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't respect the fact that I need to, you know, like, damn, I did something. I just get out and do the same thing because mm -hmm. if you, if I felt like they, they was hating on me. But things weren't all doom and gloom for a young Gucci. Now, despite being busy attending college to earn his degree and get her family in a better situation, well, Vicky, she took the time to teach Gucci about the Bible and how to read from an early age. Now, these extra lessons, they proved to be invaluable in the years to come, and they gave Gucci a leg up in school when it came to subjects like English. 
Now Gucci, he attended Jonesboro Elementary, and these emerging skills of reading and writing, well, they led to a passion for poetry. Around this time, Gucci got introduced to hip hop for the first time thanks to his brother, Victor. Now his older bro would take him to concerts like Run DMC, The Beastie Boys, and LL Cool J. Then in 1989, their entire family, they picked up shop and they moved to Atlanta. Now Vicky, she decided to move her family there after falling in love, but the guy, he had a last second change of heart, and this left Gucci and his family out on the streets. Now this was a serious time of instability in Gucci's life as his family moved from place to place looking for somewhere to settle. Now eventually Ralph, he came back into the picture and he helped set up his former family in Knights Inn where they stayed until Vicky could afford to relocate them to East End of Atlanta. Now once settled with Gucci, he attended Cedar Grove Elementary School where he continued to excel despite all the instability going on in his life. At school, Gucci stood out because of his Alabama accent. Now, despite being an athletic child, he never took part in school sports because by the time he was a teenager, well, Gucci was already busy hustling on the streets with his brother. This was uh, following in Ralph's footsteps. Now together, they sold drugs on the streets for pocket money and he told NPR, I was obsessed with money, definitely coming up because I seen so many people not having money and I went to sleep hungry. I knew what it's like to be poor. I knew what it's like to have your lights off or to have to boil water to take a bath. And that never left me. I seen the way everything was about a dollar, so in my mind, it was always like, try to make yourself not to be a burden on nobody. Now at first, it was only weed, but by the time he was in the eighth grade, he was investing his Christmas money into more lucrative product. We're talking crack. Yeah, when I was in the eighth grade, the only thing I was dealing was Pokemon cards. Oh, you already have it. Yes! By the time he was 14, well, Gucci, he had started practicing his rap skills, but it wasn't something he took very seriously. Now, after years of working the streets, his involvement with drugs, they would come to a head when he was 18 years old. Now, that was when he was arrested for the first time and booked on cocaine charges. To be honest, once I got my first charge, music was like, this is what I'm going to do. I don't want to sell drugs no more. With his background in reading and writing and poetry, well, Gucci, he took to rapping like a natural. Now match that with an incredible efficiency in the studio and an unparalleled work ethic, and Gucci, well, he was quickly off and running. Happy she so wise. See ya. After dropping Le Flair in 2001, he met producer Zaytoven in 2002, and then he launched his own label, Le Flair Entertainment. Now he secured a distribution deal through Tommy Boy Records, and he released his debut studio album, Trap House, in 2005. Now on the album was the hit single, Icy, featuring Young Jeezy. Now there was some miscommunication between the two in terms of the release of the song, and Jeezy claimed that he never received the due royalties from the track. Now days after Gucci dropped it, well Jeezy, he released a song of his own called Stay Strapped, in which he placed a $10,000 bounty on Gucci Mane's tattooed face, or head, yeah, you know. Well, you know what I'm saying, like I say, ain't too many people got the motive to do like that. Mm -hmm. I just like a detective, learn, you know what I'm Look at the motive, who has motive to do it. Mm -hmm. And this is the only motive. Mm -hmm. Jeezy. Yeah. Okay. Straight up. A group of four men decided to take Jeezy up on his offer on May 10, 2005. Now, that day, Gucci, he was attacked at his house in Decatur, Georgia. Now, he fought back, and he and his crew, they shot and killed one of the attackers. Now, for some reason, they decided to bury the guy's body near Columbia Middle School. Eventually, Gucci, he did the right thing and he turned himself into the police to explain exactly what had happened. And while being interviewed from prison about the event, well, Gucci stated, I just want to let everyone know that I'm not a murderer. I was upset. I was scared a little bit, but I had to do what I had to do. You got to be a man about it. I'm not a bad person. I have remorse for everything that happened. While being prosecuted by the DA, well, Gucci, he got into further trouble with the law in June of that year after assaulting a nightclub promoter. Now in October, he pleaded no contest to the assault charges, which landed him six months in county jail. Now while he was locked up, the DA's office, they dropped the murder charge after realizing there was insufficient evidence to prosecute. Once out of prison, well, Gucci's career, it was keeping him busy releasing new music left and right. Now, in fact, he was so busy, he completely forgot to make time for the community service hours he was supposed to serve, which was following the assault charge. In September of 2008, he was arrested for violation of probation, having completed just 25 hours of his requested 600. And we would also spend the next six months in jail as a result. In 2009, he started a new label called 1017 Brick Squad Records, and he dropped the State versus Radrick Davis in December of that year. Now it went certified gold and it reached number one on the US rap billboard charts. 
Now, while Gucci was continuing to find success as a musician, well, his legal problems, they kept cropping up. In 2010, he was arrested for driving on the wrong side of the road, running a red light, damaging government property, obstruction, and a whole bunch of other traffic charges. By 2011, he was being sent by the courts to a psychiatric hospital after his lawyer filed a special plea of mental incompetency. Now, later that year, he would be arrested on further charges of battery and assault with a deadly weapon. Twice. Damn. Fulton County Superior Court Judge John Gogert decided to revoke one year of Radrick Davis's three and a half years of probation on an assault charge. That means the rapper known as Gucci Mane will have to serve that one year in jail. More charges involving assaults on fans, they took place in 2013, but it was what happened in September of that year that would put Gucci behind bars for the longest period of his life. Now that's when he was arrested for possession of marijuana, disorderly conduct, and carrying a concealed weapon. Now he was apparently found in possession of two different loaded guns and on May 13, 2014, well he pled guilty to the crime that would see him serve a two year prison sentence. Now he served his time in Terre Haute, Indiana and he was released on May 26, 2016. The Wizard, you a free man baby, talk to your fans honey. Happy Memorial Day weekend, thank you to my fans, appreciate my lady. Love you. Yeah. Yeah. First day out. First day out the feds. Appreciate y'all support on that. We heard it on the radio everywhere. That's dope. Yeah, that's beautiful. Shout out to the Breakfast Club for premiering it too. That's good. Shout out to everybody. Once he was a free man, well, fans, they were shocked to discover that Gucci, he had undergone a dramatic physical overhaul. Now he lost around 75 pounds, he got off drugs, and he finally found time to clear his mind. Now of course with the internet being the internet, well, they had some fun at Gucci's expense. Gucci may be a con. Yeah, I heard that same rumor. It's funny to me. I guess that, you know, people ain't used to me being healthy and taking care of myself and being happy. So it's, I can understand why they, why they shock, you know what I'm saying? So it's funny, I embrace it. It just let me know a clone is like perfection. So if I look like a machine or a robot, then evidently I'm doing something well. Now his music was more successful than ever with his single Black Beatles reaching number one on the Billboard Hot 100, a first for his entire career. Now it spent seven weeks topping the list. Then in October of 2017, he married Keishia K.R. And their wedding, well, it was on BET and they produced a 10 part TV series. It was huge. Wait a minute, what's going on? What is going on? Is this a proposal? Gucci Mane night! Keisha, do you say yes? Is it a yes? Wait for it! Wait for it! Yeah! Since then, the only thing Gucci has been hustling is his music. Now he stayed problem free over the past four years now, which makes some of his fans nervous after seeing his recent post asking if anyone wants to see the old Gucci back. Now I might just speak for everyone when I say, I think uh, he's doing a-okay. We should just keep it as it is. Stay off the lean for sure. All jokes aside, huge congrats to Gucci Mane. He is one of the OGs and he did it his own way in his own lane. So kudos to him. He's also living his best life. As for the rest of the story, well, I think I'm going to wrap this one up here because this is before they're famous. My name is Michael McCrud and we make all sorts of celebrity bios. Be sure to let us know who's next in the comments down below. I'll see you guys in another video. Boom!